we're going to take a look at a very simple function. This is just going to count how many zeros there are in an array, but I'm going to give you a buggy function and I want you to try and find the bug. So here's our function, uh, number of zeros. We want to find how many zeros there are in this array x, which has length n. So far we haven't seen any zeros, so our answer is zero. And when we uh, have finished finding the zeros, we'll just return this answer. So since we want to find zeros in the whole array, we will just set up our for loop as usual. We'll start i at zero, i less than n, keep increasing i, and inside the body of the for loop, we will look at every xi. And if that is zero, we will increase this answer by one. Perfectly simple. Perhaps you think this is correct, but it's got a bug. So see if you can find it and then we'll discuss. Okay, so let's take a look at the same code on Python Tutor. I have the main uh, code down here and the function set up here, and we're going to call the function with this array of length three, one minus three and two. It has no zeros in it, so we're expecting the answer to be zero. So we call uh, we set up the array, uh, the values are 1, minus 3, and 2, and then we call this function. Uh, we're expecting these uh, arguments to be set uh, like this, n being 3, this x pointing to this array. Answer is uninitialized. Remember, this is a local variable. We will initialize it to 0. Now we enter the for loop and we have one more local variable i defined only for the duration of the for loop. We set i to 0 and that's less than n which is 3 so we enter the body of the loop. Now x0 is 1 uh, which is not 0 so we will skip this if condition and since we skip this if condition uh, and that's actually the end of the for loop you will see the visualization immediately jumps to the next uh, iteration. So uh, that uh, is now ready to check for the next iteration. We want to increase the value of i. Instead of 0, it's going to become 1. And that's still less than n. So we enter this and x1 is uh, not 0. But notice what's happened here. Uh, our array has changed. The value has changed. And do you see what the bug is? We have got a single equal to, not a double equal to. Now I know we have discussed this before and the purpose of revisiting this kind of code is twofold. Firstly, I want to remind you how easy it is to make this error. Of course, we need a double equal to. But I also want to point out some styles that people suggest to avoid exactly this kind of error. So firstly, uh, since this is actually legal code, uh, people suggest that if you want to compare a variable to a constant like zero, uh, get into the habit of writing the test this way. Of course, you should use double equal to. But in case you accidentally use single equal to, then this is actually illegal syntax. You cannot change the value of a constant using an assignment statement. So at least if you write the code this way, the compiler will warn you that uh, you have a, a mistake and this you can immediately catch and say, oh, of course, I meant to put double equal to, which is fine. So it just takes a little bit of time getting used to reading this syntax. If you don't like using this syntax or even if you're OK with the uh, other syntax, another useful tip is to uh, indicate in this function that we are not going to try and change the values in the x array because this function is only trying to look at the values and see how many of them are zero. We don't intend to modify this array. And we can say that uh, in the code by saying that this is a const int array. This word const indicates that we will not uh, change the values in this array uh, during this function. So now if we try and 
accidentally write code like this uh, and we try and compile it, then the compiler will tell us. It's a little bit hard to read this message, but it's basically saying, you promised not to modify this. You promised it was read only, and you promised this because you told me this was a const int array. So I wanted to highlight these two ways in which uh, if you use appropriate style, you can catch some common mistakes that we all tend to make as programmers. So the function itself was quite easy. Uh, of course, this should be a double equal to, uh, but the choice to say that this is a const int can sometimes help you. So wherever possible uh, in future uh, functions that we look at, if we can make our arrays const because we don't intend to modify their values, we will make it a practice to do so.